Yo, what's up guys? Chase the Rogue here, and welcome back to another Elden Ring update video. Today we're going to be taking a look at all the changes made in patch 1.12.3. Starting with the PvP exclusive balance adjustments, they decreased the damage and damage animation of the shearing vacuum effect of the Swift Slash skill. So the multi-blade slash animation you see after the Swift Slash Ash of War is performed doesn't really stun you anymore, as you can see here, and they lowered the overall damage. I would say it's still pretty strong though, but honestly, a good change at the very least. It's not going to continue to stagger you, making it hard to deal with. The instances where you actually hit with the initial slash before the follow-up though still do a ton of damage, so I feel like they could tone this down a little bit further, especially since it's still so quick and you cover so much distance from doing the ash. Moving on to the general balance adjustments, we start off with they increase the intelligence scaling of the Carrion Sorcery Sword and slightly decrease the base damage. I checked the weapon previously and its intelligence scaling was only a C, so it did receive a massive increase in its intelligence scaling, but they said they lowered the overall base damage. I'm not sure how hard of a hit it took. I would say depending on your rune level of invasion, this got a major buff though, because if you have high amounts of intelligence, having an S scaling is pretty amazing. Next on the list is they extended the throwing attack range for the following weapons, the Smith Script Dagger and the Smith Script Cirque. Now I didn't really use the dagger as much, I tried them a little bit in my playthrough, but I did notice the range was kind of lacking. It does seem like they increased it visually here from what I'm looking at. And then we have the Cirque, it's kind of hard for me to see because I didn't use these very often, but this definitely seems longer than it used to. I never really ran into anyone using these weapons either, just because they weren't the most powerful. And finishing off the general balance adjustments, they changed the placement of the bosses in the refight against the Golden Hippopotamus and Commander Gaius boss to be the same position as in the first fight. Okay, so when you initially fight the boss, their positioning is going to be the same in the following fights now. Now moving on to the most important part of the patch, the bug fixes. They really change a lot of the overpowered things in the game. Starting off, we have fixed a bug that caused the rolling spark scale to deal more damage than expected. This used to one shot, and as you can see, I have lost here. He's level 200. I believe he has 50 dex and a certain amount of faith, and is doing absolutely no damage. This, I have a video on, I'm one shotting everyone I invaded. They absolutely nerf this into the ground. I feel like it could actually deal more damage. This was kind of over nerfed. It also says they fixed the bug that caused the rolling sparks and wall of spark skill to deal no damage while some special effects were applied to the player. I never experienced that, but it's there. They also fixed a bug where some special effects of right-handed weapons would also be applied to the following weapon skills when cast with the left hand. The Discus Hurl and the Feeble Lord's Frenzied Flame. So this is where you would have a buff on your right-hand weapon and be able to apply it to your left-hand weapon's Ash of War. As you see here, Lost is throwing the Discus Hurl at me and is doing the exact same damage whether or not he has Royal Net Resolve on his main hand buffed. So that was patched. This is the bug that allowed you to add status effects to the Feeble Lord's Frenzied Flame and have Deathblade come out of the torch. I never really had it happen to me, but I did see videos on it. This next one is an amazing change. They fixed a bug where successfully guarding while attacking using the Thrusting Shield weapon type would consume less stamina than intended. You could trade Colossals, any high stamina damage weapon. It didn't really matter. You can hold your guard up, continue to attack, and you wouldn't really have to roll out or dodge out for a long period of time. You were able to just trade anything without any worries. Now, as you can see here, I get guard broken after trading the weapon twice, like a Colossal, so it's not overtuned anymore. They fixed a bug that prevented players from cancelling the attack recovery of two-handed strong attacks by rolling for certain weapons of the backhand blade weapon type. I didn't really experience that, but being able to cancel the recovery is actually really strong. Next on the list is they fixed a bug that caused the Lightning Perfume Bottle and Frenzied Flame Perfume Bottle weapons to deal double damage under certain circumstances. I wonder if that's the patch for free aiming it down i'm not really sure i mean everyone i fought when i used the perfumes they died in one shot so whether it was just the damage doing more damage than expected or the fact that it was causing double damage from certain circumstances i feel like they just overall patched the perfumes next on the list we have fixed a bug where the arcane scaling of the blood fiend's arm weapon was higher than intended when setting an affinity that's definitely when you would choose to do the blood infusion because the bleed buildup was so high already and then it also got the B scaling in Arcane and making it very powerful. The status buildup of the heavy attack was also reduced. Yeah, you would one hit bleed with the heavy attack, so I kind of figured that was coming. Now its scaling is a CC and only gets 201 bleed buildup for the exact same stats that I have in my prior video here. Here's the old snapshot of my build. Exact same thing. Used to have a B in its scaling for Arcane. Did 219 blood loss buildup. 
And the damage overall was higher as well. Used to have 368 from the scaling, now gets 301. So about 67 less damage. They fixed a bug where the face scaling of the Gazing Finger weapon was not being applied correctly. Well, I didn't really make any builds on the Gazing Finger yet, so I'm not really going to feel that change. If anyone in the comments wants to let me know, feel free to. And then we have two bug fixes for the Fire Knight's Greatsword. They fixed the bug where the damage animation of some attacks of the Fire Knight's Greatsword against players was different than expected, and fixed the bug where the attack affinity of some attacks of the Fire Knight's Greatsword were different than expected. So it's worded a little strange, but they did change the light attack to light attack true combo. It no longer combos in PvP on players. I guess that's what they meant, where the damage animation of some attacks against players was different than expected. Like when they take the hit, it followed up into the next hit, is my takeaway from that. They also fixed the bug that caused some affinities for the following weapons to be higher than intended. All the Smith script weapons did much more damage when you would sacred infuse them. Like having faith scaling gave it like higher physical damage overall, so it just made them a lot stronger when you infuse them that way. They fixed the bug that caused enemies to heal when the maximum HP reduction, gradual HP reduction effect applied by Black Knife, Tish wore off. I don't have a lot of experience with spirit summons, but I'm guessing when Tish used the Ash of War that like lowers your max HP, kind of like the knife weapon that we have, they somehow regained their HP after it wore off. They fixed a bug that caused summoned NPCs to behave differently than expected under certain circumstances, so they would just glitch out I guess in some way. I don't really have experience with that one either. Fixed a bug where the unblockable bite attack of the golden hippopotamus boss would connect with players more easily than intended. I experienced that. I walked into that boss fight, I couldn't dodge the bite, so my second attempt I just drank the iron jar aromatic and traded. <laughs> it worked pretty well. <laughs> They fixed a bug that caused text to display differently than expected, okay, and they also fixed several other performance improvements and bug fixes. And then we have a tab for possible unstable performance fixes, so if you guys are having stability issues, try these. For the PS5 version of the game, unstable frame rate may be improved by using the rebuild database option from the device's safe mode. In some PC versions, ray tracing may be unintentionally enabled and causing unstable performance. Please check the ray tracing settings in the system, graphics, ray tracing quality from the title screen or in-game menu. Yeah, I turned that off when I did play on PC. In the PC version, the message, inappropriate activity detected, may appear without cheating. Interesting. To fix that issue, please verify the integrity of the game's files before restarting the game. And then in the PC version, unstable frame rate may be caused by third-party applications that control mouse behavior. Detecting these third-party applications may improve performance. I actually have a funny story about this one. Back when I used to play Dark Souls 3 every day, I would play on PC, and I realized when I dragged my mouse over my screen, hovering it over my menu, it would cause frame loss. And in that game, when your frame rate got really low, your game kind of froze, but if you were invading, it made you freeze. So I was able to jump, spam my mouse back and forth over my menu, like left and right, and I would be hovering forever. It was such a weird issue. I don't remember if it ever got patched. I just thought it was so funny because I figured it out during a stream. But yeah, seems like you can get unstable frame rate in this game still by your mouse as well. Well, I guess this is the end of the update video. Great changes overall. The dueling shields aren't so overpowered. You can't just guard poke everything and win. The greatsword doesn't have its light to light true combo anymore. Swift Slash also received a nerf. I feel like it can use a little bit more of one though. This is still pretty spammable, even though you don't get stunned by the follow-up. It does some really good damage. And if you happen to land the initial part, you do get stunned, like where the blades hit you and you take the follow-up. I feel like they could lower the damage a little bit more, I would say. And also maybe make it so the animation is a little bit slower. You can kind of chain these together pretty quickly for the distance you can go. You know, if I want to just fully charge it at a group of enemies, I can go right by them. It's still going to be a little bit hard to punish if you're not like able to predict where they're going with it and getting to them to stun them. Overall, amazing changes though. They're going in the right direction, I would say, with balancing all of the new weapons. Feel free to leave your thoughts below. I always appreciate all the input that you guys give. Until the next video, this is goodbye. I will see you all next time. Thanks so much for watching. Goodbye. Goodbye.